Hello YouTube and welcome to the next route learning video. On today's journey we're going to be taking train 2 Mike 04 which is the 1659 London Victoria to Orpington service as far as Kent House on the Chatham Main Line and this is part of the South London Network add-on. The total distance for the journey is around 7 and 3 quarter miles and our stops along the way will be Brixton, Herne Hill, West Dulwich, Sydenham Hill Penge East and finally Kent House which is as far as the line goes on this add-on. Our attraction for the journey today is a South Eastern Class 465. The Class 465 was constructed between 1991 and 1994 by Brel, ABB and GEC Ulstom which is also known as Metro Camel. They were refurbished in 2005 at Doncaster and a total of 147 of these trains were built with four coaches per train and a maximum capacity of 348 people. The power output of each train is 1608 horsepower with a maximum speed of 75 miles per hour. Once in the cab of the Class 465 there's actually not much to do to set up the train as you probably noticed I have already put the headlights on and so what we need to do now is put the reversing handle into forward and reset the AWS self-test sequence and that's pretty much it. Uh, the other thing I need to do of course is open the doors which I've just remembered. Over here we do have a combined traction and brake controller with a maximum of four steps of power, though it actually says seven on the dashboard. That's because this was for the uh, class 166, which came with the original Great Western mainline. And unfortunately, they've recycled this from that, which has seven steps of power. So there's actually four steps of power and three steps of braking, one, two, and full service. There is a fourth step, which is the emergency position. But of course, you wouldn't normally use that when driving. Departing from London, Victoria, the starting speed limit is 15 miles per hour and we've got just over 3 miles to go to the next stop, which is Brixton. So as we approach 15 miles per hour, I'm now idling the power to allow the train to coast. Looks like I've gone just slightly above 15, so I've just braked for a moment there, just to bring our speed back down. And now I'm allowing the train to coast. 
This is a custom created scenario so I've created it specifically for this video. So I did actually put a train in which is in the real time table as all the services are from the real time table uh, which is going ahead of us so it left two minutes before and it's the one you saw in the clip at Victoria Station where I showed you the 375 departing. So that is going along exactly the same route as us on the Chatham main line but it's not stopping anywhere. So up to Brixton, we're likely to get some yellow signals. After Brixton, it's going to get further and further away from us, and our signal should be green from then on. I am just applying one step of power momentarily, as I felt we're losing just a little bit too much speed, and now I've idled the power once again. Just after we've crossed over these points, we can accelerate up to 20 miles per hour. And so just before this point here, which is going into Victoria Carriage sidings on our left, I'm now accelerating up towards 20 miles per hour. Now we've reached 20, I'm once again idling the power to allow the train to coast. And as you can see, we're about to pass a 40 mile per hour speedboard, which we've just passed now. So we can accelerate to that in a moment. So Victoria Car Carriage sidings that we're just passing to our left, that's the home of South Eastern trains at Victoria, and you often see Class 465 stabled there. I'm not sure if they stable 375s there, but they might. So now we've crossed this AWS ramp with this double yellow signal, we can now accelerate up to 40 miles per hour. So I've gone into full power as we are climbing on a 1 in 66 gradient, which is severely affecting our ability to accelerate. At this point you can see we're now passing a 60 mile per hour speed board just as we cross the River Thames here with Battersea Power Station on the left. However, we won't be able to accelerate to 60 before the speed limit drops down to 45 miles per hour just ahead. So at 45, I'm going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. The power is now in idle and we've now passed the 45 mile per hour speed board. Here we are going to lose speed down to about 39 or 38 miles per hour, but that's okay because in a short distance time when we're doing that speed, there is actually a short steep downhill section as steep as 1 in 38, which will allow us to gain all of that speed back. And so I don't see any point in maintaining 45 when we're going to have to use the brakes on that downhill section. I would just like to take the opportunity to thank you t uh, to everyone who's subscribed to me so far. In fact, in March, we achie I achieved 500 subscribers on this channel for just that one month, which is quite an achievement. So I'd just like to thank you for taking the time to subscribe to me and to watch these videos. So here we are now on the start of the down 1 in 38 gradient. As you can see, it is quite a steep drop and our speed is picking up quite quickly now. We may need to use the brakes to control our speed if we approach 45, but as you can see, the gradient here is now leveling off, and we're just about to pass Wandsworth Road Station on the right, which is now operated by London Underground, sorry, London Overground, and you can see there's a class 378 right there. We are now on an uphill gradient, which is 1 in 95, so I've applied step 1 of power to try and maintain our speed. The gradient will level again in a moment before going up once again. The gradient has now levelled out, so I'm just idling the power for a moment as we pass Clapham High Street Station on the right. And then as you can see just here the gradient is starting to go uphill again on a gradient of 1 in 95. So I've just applied one step of power to try and ensure that we don't lose too much speed.
We are now approaching Brixton where we're going to turn away from the South London line. And so in a moment I'm going to idle the power and brake for Brixton Station. So I'm idling the power now. And I'm going to brake step 2 at this signal just here. So I've now got the brakes on for Brixton and you can see the station just coming up. The South London line would continue to the left here and we're going right on the Chatham main line. We do need to stop at the four car stop sign here at Brixton which you can see just coming up on the left. So I'm now reducing the brakes as I feel we're slowing down just slightly too quick. And here we are, arrival at Brixton. Departing from Brixton, the starting speed limit is 60 miles per hour. The speed limit actually went up to 60 just as we entered the station. And we've got around three quarters of a mile to go to the next stop, which is Herne Hill. As we get to just over 50 miles per hour, I'm now going to idle the power to allow the train to coast. And in a moment I'm going to brake as the speed limit is dropping to 45 miles per hour. So I am now braking for that and at this point I'm now going to release the brakes. As we're doing 45 you can see the board just coming up and I'm going to brake at the 45 board for the stop at Hearn Hill. Here at Hearn Hill we do need to stop at the S sign which is at the end of the platform. As you can see I've just gone down to step one of braking as I felt I was slowing down slightly too quick. And now I'm releasing and I'll brake once again in a moment. Just to ensure that we stop at the right place here. As you can see we do have a red signal as we're waiting for a class 319 on a First Capital Connect service to pass ahead of us and that's actually going to cross our tracks. Departing from Herne Hill, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour and we've got just over one mile to go to the next stop, which is West Dulwich.
As you can see the speed limit is now going up to 60 miles per hour and I believe that there are no more speed changes between here and Ken House Station. As we reach 60 miles per hour, I'm going to idle the power to allow the train to coast. And just as we pass this signal just here, I'm then going to apply the brakes for our stop. So I have now made a step to brake application and you can see the platform just coming up in the distance there. I am now reducing the brakes slightly as I feel we may be slowing down slightly too quick. We do need to stop here at the four car stop sign, which I believe is about halfway along the platform. I have just released the brakes as we were slowing down slightly too quick. You can see the four car stop sign just coming up by the CCTV monitors on our left. Departing West Dulwich, the starting speed limit is 60 miles per hour and we've got around three quarters of a mile to go to the next stop, which is Sydenham Hill. I would just like to take this moment to remind you that you can find me on Facebook and the link to my Facebook page will be in the description of this video. And also if you do value the work that I do and would like to support me more then please do visit my Patreon page for further information. Again the link for that will be in the description of this video. As we approach this signal I'm now going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. We are going uphill on a gradient of around 1 in 100, which is going to help us slow down. And so I've just applied the brakes just after the overbridge which we just passed under, if you saw, as you could see the platform to West Dulwich coming up. Here at West Dulwich we do need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. So I have just uh, released the brakes temporarily because we were slowing down a bit too quick as we have the whole platform to travel along. Departing Sydenham Hill, the starting speed limit is 60 miles per hour and we've got around one and a half miles to go to the next stop which is Penge East. So we're now entering quite a long tunnel here, I'm not sure what the name of the tunnel is but I will try and find out and see if I can put it in a caption on this video and then once we've left this tunnel we will be very close to our stop at Penge East. Just to remind you that coming up soon will be a voyager from Dundee to Edinburgh on the Scottish East Coast mainline route 
as people have voted for the Voyager to be the train that I use for that journey. Uh, that seems to have been the most requested train that I cover. And I am still planning on doing Peterborough to York in a Deltic on the Creative Rail East Coast mainline, which should be coming up soon. Now we've reached 60 miles per hour, I've just idled the power to allow the train to coast to ensure that we don't gain too much speed. If we lose too much speed, I will then apply just one step of power just to bring us back up towards 60 miles per hour. As we leave this tunnel, there is a short, steep downhill gradient which will cause us to speed up. I believe it's something like 1 in 40. And so now we're on this gradient, I am just applying one step of braking to ensure that we don't gain too much speed as the stop is coming up very shortly. I've now applied a second step of braking to bring our speed off and you can see Penji Station just coming up. Now here at Penge East, I couldn't see a forecast stop sign, I could only see an S sign, but that seemed just too far up the platform to stop, so I am going to aim to stop under the footbridge, just slightly further up on the platform that you can see. So I'm going to stop around there. Departing from Penge East, the starting speed limit is 60 miles per hour and we've got around two thirds of a mile to go to our next and final stop, which is Kent House. I would just like to point out that I am using here the Armstrong Powerhouse Lighting Enhancement Pack and as the season is set to autumn and it's around evening time, you can really see how it affects the light levels in Train Simulator and I think it makes the whole game look so much better especially in autumn where you can see the colours of the leaves are slowly changing I think it really improves the overall look of the game now we've reached 50 miles per hour, I've idled the power to allow the train to coast and I'm going to brake just as just before we enter this left hand curve here as you see I've already applied the brakes and you can see Kent House station just coming up we do need to stop here at the forecast stop sign which is near the other end of the platform unfortunately we can't go any further within train simulator I wish we could drive all of the way to Orpington so this is as far as we can go on this journey today So here we are, arrival at Kent House. Thank you very, very much for watching and I really hope you've enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and visit my Facebook page.